car here. At some point, I intend to do a more in-depth video about my late teens and early 20s, talk about some of my work history and other fun self-indulgent ramblings like that. But today, I want to talk about my interaction with the alt-right pipeline. I didn't engage much with political YouTube uh, until I got a brief glimpse at conservative anti-SJW and alt-right content cre creators by way of metadata from a couple videos I'd previously enjoyed. That said, I never fell down the alt-right pipeline. Why? Well, I've never had the privilege of falling into an alt-right movement. Also, it's really, really racist. The alt-right pipeline refers to a collection of content creators and websites that engage in increasingly reactionary rhetoric. It often starts with channels based around uh, seemingly innocent topics like skateboarding or video games, which then leads to creators with more and more extreme views, often tangentially related to the original topic. To fall down the alt-right pipeline is to be radicalized to a reactionary stance after falling victim to the propaganda of these videos that take up an increasing amount of one's media consumption. Through most of my 20s, I didn't watch much YouTube. I mostly watched stand-up comedy on Netflix and generally only went on YouTube to listen to music and watch uh, music videos. There was a couple uh, big Let's Play channels like Markiplier that I would watch. Ohio native, by the way. Represent. I used to be an avid reader of Crack.com and I got into some of their classic video sketches. At one point, they started a YouTube channel and expanded their video crew to the point where they were releasing original content six days a week. This is uh, where populous, popular leftist YouTuber Cody Johnston would start his uh, segment that would later become some more news. Of course, after Scripps purged their entire video staff weeks before Christmas in 2018. <sighs> Never forget. Cracked had begun delving into more political content. Their investigative series, Cracked Goes There, at its peak, had the editor on location in Kurdistan doing in-person interviews with freedom fighters. They also had a series called Cracked Explains that used high production value, well-edited essays to explain some of the ills of capitalism and American imperialism. This was the beginning of my foray into political content on YouTube. I would later watch a Cracked Explains video about video games hosted uh, by somebody I don't remember exactly that talked about some of the economic and cultural issues surrounding video games. There was also a Cracked Explains video hosted by the legendary Daniel O'Brien explaining the NRA and their allegiance to corporate gun manufacturers and their history as an organization. The metadata of these two videos, which I watched several times over, would open me up to new corners of the platform. I was already familiar with Joe Rogan, as I was a big fan of stand-up comedy and Comedy Central back in the day. I also enjoy UFC and his old show Fear Factor. That said, whenever I tuned in to his podcast, he mainly just came off as some pretentious meathead rambling on and on about DMT or whatever. Not really something that interested me. No. What first introduced me to the alt-right and conservative content was response videos to the two videos I mentioned earlier. The NRA video had a response made by uh, NRA spokesman and gun YouTuber Colian Noir, where he mostly responded to flimsy straw men and failed to acknowledge any of the arguments made in the cracked video. The other response video I saw was from a gaming YouTuber speaking behind a cartoon avatar of a Shiba Inu who went by the name of Rags. I was still new to watching this kind of content on YouTube, but I checked out his video. He mentioned Gamergate, which I had the privilege of missing out on entirely on account of working 60 plus hours a week and not caring much about what either side had to say about the video games that I played. But I watched his video, and I wasn't too certain about the validity of the points he raised. He seemed to like to accuse different content creators of being anti-gamer and using out-of-context clips of feminist YouTubers to mock and belittle their views, but I watched a couple more of his videos. Most of them were talking about the quality of next-gen consoles, something that didn't concern me a whole lot as a Chad PC gamer. 
But he also had a video responding to a couple streamers condemning PewDiePie for having a heated gamer moment and shouting a racial slur. I watched the video, I disagreed with it, but my interest was piqued. Then I looked at the comments, and it was very clear to me that I had no place on the alt-right or anyone adjacent to them. So I will ultimately explore ideas about integrating people into leftist spaces after re-radicalizing from the right to the left. I do have some nuanced views on this, and I think that there is something that can be done, although I disagree with most of the current discourse on the subject. I did not fall down the alt-right pipeline. And the reason I didn't fall down the alt-right pipeline is because after seeing the comments underneath that rags video, it instantly took me back to my mostly white high school full of stuck-up little rich white boys with rich white parents who used to argue with me that everyone should be allowed to say the n-word, and why isn't there a white history month, and people should just listen to the cops and they won't get shot. Yeah. There is a certain level of privilege, a certain level of ignorance of the lived experiences of others, necessary to espouse takes like those that I saw surrounding content creators like Rags. I kept digging, though. Like when you find a rotting animal carcass in the woods, you just gotta poke at it a bit longer. No matter how disgusted you are. So in the second Rags video I watched, he mentioned someone called Sargon of Akkad, and if you've been on this uh, cursed platform for any significant period of time, I don't need to tell you who this doughy pile of English pond scum is. But long story short, a brief tour of his older videos, Sargon's that is, show him mock and demean a kid with Down syndrome, shout the n-word several times across multiple videos, and in general behave like an obstinate ass. After watching some of his content, I happened to cross uh, some of the other right-wing content creators like Steven Crowder, whose Change My Mind series initially interested me, but again, watching him release a video where he dressed in an immensely offensive Native American costume and replete, repeatedly play defense for cops murdering black men, I was turned off of his ilk for good. I would later find YouTubers responding to some of these folks, like Kevin Logan, Three Arrows, Sean, and the excellent but now defunct Bad Mouse Production, and further on I would start watching a lot of uh, Afrocentric or black uh, leftist content creators, or left-leaning content creators, people like Cat Black or Black Red Guard, uh, and suck my opinion. So for this next part, I am going to be charitable and offer solutions. But first, I'm going to be very, very uncharitable and get some things off my chest. It should be stated that there are several leftist content creators who had previously themselves fallen down the alt-right pipeline. Some of them have made videos detailing this journey. But I want you to know something. Guess what? I don't care. I do not care. It must be great to have the privilege of flirting with fascism, white supremacy, and sexism, and then get to be pulled out of it and get ten th tens of thousands of subscribers to applaud your journey. You were an edgy kid with terrible opinions and a webcam your parents bought, and you complained when women and black people with valid concerns voiced those concerns because it rubbed you the wrong way. You experienced economic hardship? Who cares? Join the club. Try being a massive black man with an ethnic name and bad credit trying to make his way through the job market. Did the mean lady say things about your video games? So you're gonna dox her, send bomb threats to her events, harass her family? Grow up and get over yourself. The kind of privilege necessary to be able to respond to criticism in that fashion shows that you've never been punished for anything in your life. Oh no. Are they putting non-cishet white characters in your favorite movie? You think a reasonable response is to bully actors off of social media? I'm not ready to forget the terrible person that you were, and I'm not ready to let you forget the terrible person that you were. And the harm that you've done. Because the victims of your edgy, confused baby Nazi phase most certainly have not forgotten. Climbing out of the alt-right pipeline is little more than you deciding one day to think about someone other than yourself. There are too many content creators taking victory laps about all the people who they convince to not be fascists anymore, but do little to organize with or reach out to the people targeted by fascists. 
There are numerous black radicals on this platform that actually speak to the lived experiences of black Americans under capitalism who struggle to pull a fraction of the engagement of pasty Redditors who care more about padding their subscriber count with reformed chuds than building actual bridges to the millions of disaffected black citizens who continue to grind and struggle every day in this hellscape. I know that some of the larger channels that upload big expensive productions have been instrumental in converting some of these individuals. I also know that it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence to know that the difference between someone being a fashy idiot and someone who will maybe acknowledge that black people are human is an hour long video with costume changes, a professional score, and red and blue lighting. And let's be clear, most of these content creators are rather young, and most of their fans are even younger their children under the age of 18. As one of the few actual parents doing this leftist YouTube thing, I can assure you kids are easily molded by media figures. And it undercuts the whole bringing people to the left defense when the majority of the audience is too young to vote, lacks the necessary means to perform mutual aid or direct action, and still harbor very narrow and immature views of the world as a whole. Don't call it a community, it's just a fan club. So, content creators who focus on converting right-leaning viewers maybe don't be so defensive if some minorities show apprehension at the idea of rubbing shoulders with reformed alt-right chuds and praising their newfound wokeness. It comes off as someone who is just seeking the best means to increase their audience. So you know, maybe don't do this. Their presence can be very alienating to those who may have been impacted by their past actions, and if their past actions don't align with the ideology of the space they're currently trying to occupy, then understand that they may not always be welcome in that space, and the burden of growth and recompense is on their shoulders. Okay, that needed to be said. Now, I want to be more charitable. Ultimately. I do want people to come around to share my ideology. After all, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't want to convert people. But most of my content is to provide commentary to social movements and perhaps lend some new perspective to those who are already left-leaning or at least progressive so that they can maybe f further improve their engagement with these ideas. Perhaps some of my content will strike a chord with someone on the right who is questioning of their own beliefs. But I am not going to focus my effort on converting my enemy. I'm going to spend my effort reaching out to those targeted by my enemies. And I don't believe that every space should be tolerable of people who are still unlearning bigotry. Not every space has to be welcoming, and not every act of solidarity will be reciprocated. How can you in good faith reach out to someone who fits the same demographic as a minority who received highly visible harassment on social media when the perpetrators of that harassment move freely through the spaces you cultivate? you can't. That person will look elsewhere. There can be spaces for the converted to grow and interact with those who are willing to dedicate their time to the arduous task of unteaching bigotry. But much like other safe spaces, some consideration needs to be made for the potential pitfalls of not restricting the participants. I want to gain new comrades, but I don't want to lose other comrades, especially the ones who are in the most need of help along the way. YouTube channel Innuendo Studios has an incredible series called the Alt-Right Playbook. One of their installments is titled How to Radicalize a Normie. His segment towards the end spells it out better and more succinctly than I could. Pre-conclusion, for fuck's sake do not make Gabe your whole ass praxis. Before we continue, I want to state plainly that Gabe went off the deep end because he found a community willing to tell him that because he is a cishet white man, the world revolves around him. Do not treat him like this is true. If a fraction of the energy spent having debates with America's Gabes were spent instead on voter reenfranchisement, prisoners' rights, protections for immigrants, statehood for DC, and redistricting, Gabe's opinions, in the societal sense, wouldn't matter. Our goals should be centered on making a better world for everyone in it. And what will happen when you build a better world around those with reactionary views? Their views become obsolete, and they are forced to either come to terms with their own beliefs and take a drastic self-inventory, or they are pushed out of society entirely. Humans are social creatures. The majority of people, when faced with the threat of the world moving on without them, will acquiesce to change. And this does not just extend to formerly right-wing individuals and leftist spaces. This extends to leftists within leftist spaces interacting with minorities. 
There is a very serious and troubling disconnect between conscious black voices online and the largely white online leftist community. There's this unshakable feeling that for someone to push for a more egalitarian society or achieve liberation for their people, they have to conform to a very white, very Eurocentric idea of progress. You're telling me that we can understand the nuance of Irish nationalism and indigenous rights to land and culture, but you dismiss culture and conflate black nationalism with black ethno-nationalism? You can distinguish between a democratic socialist, a social democrat, and a libertarian socialist, but you can't see why a group of people would want to establish some form of independence and liberation after they've spent a few centuries getting kicked down the ladder socially and economically. There are people on this platform with massive followings and could use those as an opportunity to elevate and amplify the voices of the oppressed. We are supposed to be radicals. It's about time we start listening to some radical ideas, even when they are coming from people that we have difficulty engaging with. This is the only way to bridge the divide. This is the only way forward. I'm ready to move forward, but we can't do it if we are constantly taking steps backward. (laughs) 